How's it everyone? Welcome to another racket review right here on Open Court. So today I'm finally getting to try a racket that I've been looking to try for a very long time. It's a very popular racket so I finally got my hands on it. Today we get to check out the new Yonex V-Core 95. Let's check it out. So before we get into this review, I'd like to thank Jace Akagi over at On Point Sports. This is his personal racket, the V-Core 95. He let me borrow it to review for you guys. And according to this sticker, it looks like he strung it with Yonex Polytour Rev 125 at 50 pounds. So thank you, Jace, for letting me borrow this racket. All right, so the V-Core 95, I already did a full review on the V-Core 98. So you guys can check that out for all of the new technologies that go in this, like the 2G NAMD Flex Force. It also has the VDM, the aero fins, the silicone oil infused grommets. I'm not gonna get into all of that because I already explained it in that video. Let's just quickly take a look at the specs of this V-Core 95. So as you guys can see with the specs, it's a 310 unstrung weight with a 310 millimeter balance, which is ideal for me. I like a headlight balance, so check this out guys. It leans heavily towards the handle. This is the most I've seen a Yonex racket lean this way on the handle. So I'm excited to try serving and volleying with this because I like headlight balance so I can get that whip over my head on the kick serve and the maneuverability at the net. Going back to the specs here, you can see that it has a pretty low swing weight because of that headlight balance and it has a 16 by 20 string pattern. I'm liking this string pattern more and more. And although this is a 95 square inch because of the new frame construction, it's wider at the top here. So it's actually probably gonna be a little bit more powerful, a little bit more forgiving than standard 95s. When I tried the V-Core 98, I felt like that racket was a 100 square inch head size because of that super generous sweet spot. So if my estimation is correct, this is probably gonna feel larger than a traditional 95. All right, so enough babbling. Let's jump on the court. I'm super excited to try this racket. Let's see how the V-Core 95 plays. So let's start out with the pros of the 2023 update to the Yonex V-Core 95. There were many things I liked about this racket. Starting with the most obvious, the headlight balance. This racket is extremely maneuverable. This was in stark contrast to the last Yonex racket I reviewed, which was the 2022 Yonex E-Zone 98 Tour. The V-Core 95 is so much easier to bring over my head and is less tiring to swing during long matches. My favorite shot with this racket was my kick serve. This is the reason why I like a headlight racket. I was able to accelerate through the contact point and pronate so easily with the V-Core 95. I could hit biting kick serves that bounced up and away from my opponent's strike zone. I could use my serve as a weapon and set myself up for an approach shot or charge the net. My kick serve is usually better from the ad side, but with the V-Core 95, I was able to get my kick serve on the deuce side to curve in the air and kick high to the backhand side. As a primarily doubles player, I stand farther out toward the singles line to serve on the deuce side. The V-Core 95's acceleration allowed me to hit better kick serves than just about every racket in my collection. Maybe the only one that can rival it in the kick serve is the Head Extreme Tour. The V-Core 95 was also very maneuverable at net. I like this maneuverability for two reasons. Number one, I could get my racket into position to dig back defensive and reflex volleys very easily. I couldn't do that at all with the E-Zone 98 Tour because that racket is very sluggish. And number two, I had no trouble hitting angle volleys and drop shots. Because of the head lightness, I could control the racket easily when aiming finesse shots. This racket felt like a scalpel in the front court. But the head light balance gives the V-Core 95 remarkable levels of spin all around on topspin forehands as well. The spin generation, smaller head size, and 16 by 20 string pattern gave this racket great control on full swings from the baseline. That extra cross string gives the V-Core 95 a slightly stiffer layup compared to the 19 cross V-Core 98, resulting in the ball losing a little more energy upon contact. This allows advanced players to swing out more aggressively and dictate the point with their own power. This racket reminded me a little bit of the V-Core SV98, which also had a 16 by 20 string pattern, but also had some decent power. My prediction was correct. The V-Core 95 was a lot more forgiving and easier to hit with than any other 95 square inch racket I've tried in the past. This 95 felt more like a 98 and it got decent power from the baseline. 
I especially noticed this on my backhand side. My backhand is flatter compared to my forehand so I could drive through contact and hit penetrating shots. I could consistently hit the higher sweet spot and drive the ball deep. When running around on defense, this racket was easy to get into position and hit defensive shots that didn't leave me compromised. I had good control on defensive slices and I could keep those shots low so my opponent couldn't attack the next ball. Also on running forehands, it was easy to get the whipping action on the upward forehand swing like Nadal. Obviously I'm not Nadal, but these headlight rackets are always easy to hit his signature buggy whip forehand and keep the ball low or aim for sharp angles on defense. I could also throw up defensive lobs pretty easily, although this isn't a shot I rely on too much. The Vcore 95 is also a comfortable racket due to the vibration dampening mesh in the handle. Truth be told, I like stiffer layups and I think this racket along with most other Yonex rackets recently are a bit too muted for hitting touch shots, but overall players who like softer frames will appreciate the forgiving levels of vibration from the new Vcore. Lastly, I think the specs of the Vcore 95 are in a very good place and leaves room for customization. If you like to tinker with your racket's weight like I do, this Vcore 95 can easily be customized to pack more of a wallop. I would definitely add a little bit of weight in the head and throat so the racket has a bit more plow but also counterbalance by putting some weight in the butt cap because this headlight balance is ideal for hitting spin. Overall the Vcore 95 was very easy to swing, it wasn't taxing playing with this from the baseline for long matches and I could accelerate easily through contact and generate loads of spin. But it does have some flaws which I'll get into now. So moving into the cons of the 2023 Yonex Vcore 95. It's interesting because I think the greatest strength of the Vcore 95 is also its biggest weakness and that is its ultra headlight balance and low swing weight. It may seem like a self contradiction after I praise this racket for its headlight maneuverability and ease of use, but I definitely think this racket could benefit from more weight overall. Having a low swing weight comes with a trade off of less stability and plow through. Again, this is in stark contrast with the EZO 98 Tour which has a beefy swing weight, great torsional stability and better plow and power on full strokes. The 95 head size also makes it so the Vcore can get pushed around a bit against harder hitters. On returns, I saw a noticeable drop in power and penetration from my usual returns because this Vcore 95 just didn't plow through contact. My returns didn't have any weight behind them and I couldn't dictate the rally with my returns. I like to take returns early with my compact swing and redirect power and this is where a heavier racket shines more because it won't twist in my hand if I hit off center and the weight will assist in hitting faster returns. My return game suffered with the Vcore 95 and I think most advanced players will think this racket needs more beef in the head. I personally love the headlight feel but objectively the low swing weight might be an issue for heavy hitters. The lack of plow through power is also noticeable on the flat and slice serves. I love this racket on my kick serve but that's because I swing in a more vertical path with the kick serve. Vertical swings are where the Vcore series shines, but I couldn't get much pop on the flat and slice serves and that led to me hitting quite a bit of them into the net. Although the E-Zone Tour is taxing to keep serving with over long matches, I rarely hit serves into the net with that racket because I had so much weight behind my serve. The Vcore 95 doesn't have that same punch. Thankfully my kick serves were so good with this racket that this wasn't a big issue but it still would have been nice if I had more power behind my flat and slice serves. Speaking of slices, the Vcore 95's low swing weight also meant this racket had a rather high launch angle on slices. With a head heavier racket like the E-Zone Tour, it's easier to push through contact and hit low gliding slices that skid along the ground. My backhand slices with the Vcore 95 floated over the net higher than usual and I actually ended up sailing some slices long. I could hit defensive slices fine when I was trying to aim low and shallow, but when I tried to aim low and deep, this racket just didn't quite have enough weight to hit those deep slices. So lastly, let's answer the question of who is the Yonex Vcore 95 racket for? It's for players who like a headlight and whippy racket that generates tons of spin and is easy to swing over long matches. This racket is also in the perfect zone for customizers. I think this racket needs more weight in the head for the advanced hitters because in stock form, this racket's swing weight is too low for people who play against harder hitters, but overall I really enjoyed this racket more than the Vcore 98 which just had too much power and too high of a trajectory in my opinion. Between this and the EZO 98 Tour, it's nice that Yonex has rackets that are so different that there is something for just about everyone.
thank you for watching this review of the 2023 Yonex VCore 95 right here on Open Court. If you guys like this content, be sure to overhead smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you on an open court.